Hi, my name is Philip Harrison. I am recording from Matt's Gymnastic Center and Dance Refuge in uh, sort of the border of Los Feliz and Silver Lake in Los Angeles. Um, but I am uh, sitting here today with uh, Matthew Mori. Who... Hello. It's nice to be here. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Yeah, for sure. This is awesome. Uh, Matthew created Dance Refuge in the front part of uh, his father. Um, what's your father's name? I know him as Coach Mori. Uh, his first name is Mitsuo. Mitsuo yeah. Mori. Coach Mori has uh, run the gymnastics center here for how long has it been? 30? At this location, um, close to 40 years. That's incredible. Yeah. And where was it before? How long? Uh, he had another place, I think, in like Silver Lake or Echo Park area. Uh -huh. That was also like an old mechanic kind of place. Uh -huh. And they used to put the bars outside and stuff like that. Like they would open it up and have stuff inside and outside in like the parking lot. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. That's and then he said in the 70s he bought this, this place. It's very community oriented. Um, I grew up here, so. To me, I would always just see different groups of friends over the, the ages, like come and go. Like either either people come and stay their whole lives or, you know, they'll come and go and then revisit when they have time because everyone gets busy. But the core of, I guess, the like the atmosphere is that everyone here is friends. We're all helping each other out. Um, we're doing the best that we can with like the bodies that we have. You know, some people are really talented and like continue to improve. Some people are just here for maintaining like what they have left, but everyone's just doing it for fun. You know, everyone's trying to learn skills and it doesn't matter like what your income level is or what age you are or ethnicity or anything like that. Like I always see uh, like people from everywhere like come together and you know, just like have fun under gymnastics or parkour or martial arts or whatever it may be. And so to me, that's like the most special thing about mats is that it's like a place for everyone and it's like a family, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean, some of those pe people you mentioned, they've been coming here for 30 or 40 years and really have, you know, uh, extended their physically like mobile lives hugely by coming here. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but then there's like, uh, I mean, last week there was, it seemed like there was a, like a million USC students in here. Yeah, right now it's, really good that we have a very wide range. Uh, a few years ago it was a little bit narrower, but currently we have people as young as five years old taking classes under my dad. And then um, I think my dad might be the oldest person in the building. He's currently 71, so that's the, the age range, five to 71, that's a huge gap. Um, a lot of the times uh, high school people from the local neighborhoods will come through and there's been uh, a bunch of kids coming for classes these days and a lot of people have been finding this place through Yelp which is really nice mm -hmm. um, but yeah for the the kids I think the oldest one is 11 and the youngest ones are five or six mm -hmm. and so there's like a good group of them I think there's like seven kids right now in the class and mm -hmm. it's three days a week there's a bunch of students from USC right now which is really nice mm -hmm. um, they're usually freshman age and even the college age kids that aren't from USC they're around like 20 to 24 Mm -hmm. and they've been with us for a while now too. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, there's definitely a good range of, of students who come here. Mm -hmm. And you definitely see like there's a, str I think there's a strong uh, older demographic too. Mm -hmm. I feel like with young people, they're kind of inconsistent with how often they come, but with mm -hmm. like the, the adult class, you, they've been coming for, for years, like you've been coming for four years and mm -hmm. you know, that's really great. Um, but so, yeah, th th 30 years, some of them, you know, yeah, that's, pretty, yeah. that's pretty amazing. That's, in, that's insane. And like the flexibility of those people who are in their, some of them are in their 60s, mm -hmm. like it's amazing compared to what you typically think of yeah. in terms of like a 60 year old yeah, or, yeah, or someone I, in their 60s. <laughs> when I was a kid, like I always uh, knew my dad is like, being in his like 40s, 50s, 60s, right? And now that I'm in my 20s and he's in his 70s, it's insane to to know that he's been doing gymnastics since he was in high school. So like a span of 60 years. Yeah. <laughs> so let, actually, let's talk about that. You know, you kind of gave me a segue there, just talking about you know you were so young, starting to take classes. And I mean, I've seen you in the gym, and like I'm always impressed by. Um, you and what you're able to do just sort of naturally having grown up in the gym and taken your father's classes 
and learning from your group of friends and just continuing to do. Tell me, uh, tell me about that, how you started doing gymnastics and... Um, okay, uh, I think, I don't remember how young I was when I started doing classes, but it was probably like around five or six, yeah. I would say. Um, I would do it with my sister and there were four other students who uh, came for, for years at a time too. Yeah. Maybe like a span of five years, we trained with them, like the, the six of us together. Uh, two of them were two brothers and the other two were two sisters, which was like pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. So it was like a pair of brothers, a pair of sisters, and then me and my sister. <laughs> and like the age differences between all of the siblings was like two years. So like we all ended up like matching up in terms of like age. And it was just like really fun because the, the two sisters were competitive actually. So they would do competitions and they trained at other gyms as well. But their dad really liked my dad because he had the most experience and uh, he would be very strict with us a lot of the times, <laughs> yeah. you know. And then the other, the other uh, pair of brothers, they, their dad wanted them to just learn everything. So they were in martial arts class and they were doing gymnastics and music and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a cool kind of like sibling uh, rivalry amongst different pairs of siblings, you know, so um, yeah, we would do class like t two or three times a week, um, every day, not every day, but <laughs> two or three times, yeah, two, <laughs> <laughs> three times a week we would do class, but every day after school we would come to the gym regardless of whether or not there was a, a kid's class that time, so um, I, I was here six days a week, Monday through Friday and Saturday, Wow. Um, and yeah, I had the, the kids' classes and then as soon as I don't know, maybe I was like eight or nine, I started doing the adult classes too. Uh -huh. um, Cause there were some adults who were a little bit younger than the, the usual demographic, like in their early 20s, I would say. So mm -hmm, like David mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this, uh, this uh, student we had named Travis, they, would, they started doing uh, the adult class and they started to excel mm -hmm. beyond the, the, the usual level of the adult class. Mm -hmm. So my dad brought me in so I could kind of keep them company and like challenge them as well. Cause <laughs> like if you're, if you're like 22 and you're competing against like an eight or nine year old, yeah. like you want to do your best as well, you know, if, you you're, if you guys are on the same game, level, just yeah. Just save a little face. Yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> like I wasn't, I wasn't the best at the time, but I, I think I, I held my own yeah. against them. I'm sure so you that was, did. <laughs> that was pretty fun. So um, is there some favorite area of gymnastics that you like the most or? Uh, probably floor exercise is my main event. Uh, we never really did much on the other events uh -huh. uh, as kids like we we would learn the tricks but the most of the emphasis was on floor exercise uh -huh. and it's definitely the most translatable to other things uh -huh. so like trampoline or you know even even doing diving board stuff into a pool yeah. you can you can easily like move those tricks over yeah so yeah. i think i think floor is, is where i live yeah I love watching people who are really good it's a, it's amazing i mean you can't believe uh what you can do, you yeah. know, and the, how much flexibility you can have, how much power you can have to jump up. You guys, uh, watching you and some of the other guys, it's like you get so high up in the <laughs> air. You know? uh -huh. It's like to me, it seems impossible. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, and more rec uh, I don't know if it's a more recent thing, but uh, how long have you been doing the coaching? Uh, so with gymnastics coaching, it's maybe been like three or four months. Uh -huh. Like I've always trained people informally uh -huh. since I was in high school. And I think that's where I caught like the teaching bug. Uh -huh. um, but I think for official sessions, it's been like a few months. And then just like kind of helping people out, you kind of learn um, like what to do. And like, of course, I've watched my dad coach for so many years. Sure. So like I, I knew like the suggestions he would give yeah. and then once I started helping people uh -huh. I noticed like oh that's what he means when uh -huh. like like shift or uh -huh. you know block or something like you that. You could see how to translate it yeah. into the, yeah, and what he's actually trying to get across uh -huh. each time. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah it's really cool like seeing um, his lessons in application like uh -huh. a, a lot of times in school like you learn math or like science and you don't <laughs> use it ever but like when you actually see it being used you're like wow that's uh -huh. that's like super interesting right or like you see the value of it super valuable yeah, yeah. Um, and so like now that I've been teaching like I really am watching him more closely to see like what he actually sees because I know like in his mind it's it's almost instantaneous if he sees someone doing something wrong he's like oh I know exactly what to tell them yeah. 
Um, I've seen that. I've I've been in that situation. <laughs> uh -huh. He's I mean he's such an experienced coach, you know, and he's had so many students. It's yeah. like he knows exactly what the issue <laughs> is. The before it even happens, yeah. you know. So yeah, so let's just talk about your dad and his, uh, uh, a little bit in his history. Uh, I mean, one of the uh, things I love uh, come as a new person coming to the gym, just walking over to the side wall and seeing this uh, t-shirt, beautiful white t-shirt with some sort of Olympic uh. logo <laughs> on it. Uh -huh. and. Um, and then, um, you know, seeing a photo n next to it, uh, what, uh, why don't you tell uh, that, uh, what, what is that? What, what am okay. I seeing Yeah, there? for sure. Okay, so my, well, my dad uh, was born in Japan, uh, I think 1946. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, he grew up in a small town in like the, the southeast part of Japan. Uh, the prefecture is the Gifu prefecture. Uh -huh. and like if I had to give like a reference point, it's between Mount Fuji and Osaka. So like, yeah, in the middle, in the south. Yeah. But yeah, his so his, uh, his athletic coach was uh, a really big fan of his because of his like strong work ethic. And uh, one day, like he found out that they were carrying the Olympic torch through his town for I think the '64 Olympics. Mm -hmm. And so his so he's uh, like 18 years old. Yeah, yeah. his uh, his coach uh, recommended him to be one of the torch bearers. And so they selected him and he was able to carry the torch and uh, they gave him like that tank top for him to run in, you know, and yeah, it was, I think it was a really cool moment in his life because um, he would eventually reach like Olympic level gymnastics, but it was like a, a sign early on that if he worked hard, you know, he could achieve great things through like recommendations mm -hmm. and, you know, building strong bonds and like a strong history of like excellence, I guess, is uh -huh. a good way to put it. Yeah, and uh, I think that's probably one of his, his proudest moments, I would say. Yeah. I know he still runs like almost every morning, like yeah. at like five in the morning. Yeah. So he's, he's definitely still in great shape. Yeah, well, I mean, just describe him as a gymnast even today. Yeah. He's incredible. Yeah. I mean, when he does the moves, he does them more perfectly than anybody <laughs> in the gym. You Definitely. Know? Um, he's so spot on and amazing at 71 years old, you know. Um, so he did, when did he start doing gymnastics? I think he started his freshman year of high school. I know it was definitely like around that age for sure, mm -hmm. but he was he was. But he wasn't five or anything. No, yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't young. He I think he started late to many people's standards, mm -hmm. and he was actually in judo, um, and someone did. I think it, it was either a back handspring or a front handspring. But he was like, I want to learn that, <laughs> and so the guy ended up taking him to the gymnastics like club or team, and that's when he just started, and like he, it became like a like a very strong passion An for him, I guess. Almost, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I think he said he would train, like, three hours every day after school oh. with, like, the team or on his own just because, like, he wanted to be so good, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And did you say uh, that he did, uh, he developed into Olympic level yeah. uh, abilities? Did, was he part of an Olympic team? Um, he wasn't. So when he came to the U.S., like, in his 20s, he competed for the all-around, I think, national championships, mm -hmm. and he won it, um, someone told me, three years in a row, I believe. And so that qualified him to uh, attend the Olympic trials. That's incredible. Yeah, and he probably would have made the team, but he wasn't a citizen of the U.S., so he couldn't be on the team, and that's where it Wow. Ends. Yeah. Oh. Was that a uh, heartbreak for him, or...? Um, I'm not sure actually. Yeah. I'm sure he wanted to be on a team. I don't know if he would have wanted to be on the U.S. team because like his home, his home country, Japan, like means a lot to him. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, it was probably either be on the the Japanese team or not be on it at all. But, but he didn't. He never tried out for the uh, Japanese. He just wasn't in a position to try. Yeah, I think because he was living here and he had his businesses established already. Uh -huh, like he. Okay didn't want to go back just to, yeah. to try and. How, do you know how he came to the idea of like opening up a gym in the United States? I think he always liked teaching. Um, before he was a coach in the US, he was a PE teacher 
in, in Japan. Mm -hmm. So he did that for a few years before his mentor invited him over to the U.S. Mm -hmm. to, to help train U.S. gymnasts. Mm -hmm. Um, I, th I think there was probably a conversation with the, the group he was with who said he was good enough to, uh -huh. to start his own gym. Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know at the time, at least from what people have told me, like gymnastics was bigger back, back in the day mm -hmm. and like everyone was looking for like the best coach. Mm -hmm. And so he had, he had the skills definitely. Yeah. Um, in, maybe, La in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I think he, he just decided to do it. <laughs> I, I could see him just being like, this is what I love, like yeah. this is what I want to do. Let's actually just talk for a second about the gym itself um, and uh, what people can do here, the mm -hmm. equipment that's here. And uh, uh, tell me too about, uh, I know you guys have been doing some upgrades, um, and, uh, but tell me about what, what's here now. Mm -hmm. What can people generally do coming to the gym? Oh. So my estimate of the gym size is maybe like 6,000 square feet. They have a, a gymnastics floor. It's about, I think it's the regulation like 40 by 40 feet. There's like, I would say like three sections on the floor where people can do tumbling passes. Um, there's another area that has a lot of uh, crash mats that a lot of people who are beginners can, can practice like backflips or whatever they want and not get injured. And then they have stretching areas like along the side. Um, so there's, there, there's a very like formulaic kind of outline to the gym and you just kind of have to watch what people do and like mm -hmm. where they're walking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think like whatever you want to do on the floor, you're capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's a, there's a trampoline. Yeah, we have a trampoline. Uh, we have all the, the Which male I, I equipment. I see you on the trampoline uh -huh. quite often. It seems like it's like, I don't know whether you're meditating over there, but I see you. You basically go on there and you'll spend like 20 minutes sometimes, uh -huh. I think, just flipping and spinning and all kinds of things. Yeah, I actually prefer trampoline to be my warm up because yeah. I feel like it's it's low um, impact on the body, at least, and you know it's it's a good way to kind of like test your skills to see if you're still sharp. Yeah. Uh, especially like if you take a break and you come back and like you've gained a, like a few pounds or something. <laughs> yeah. Like it's a good way to to see if you can still do what you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, and like as a kid, my dad would always have trampoline in his in his children's classes, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the reasons that my sister and I have such good body control mm -hmm. is because we understand like how to move in space, mm -hmm. and especially like if the gravity changes on us, like we we still understand how to adapt to it, and and yeah, either like over rotate on purpose and like transfer momentum from one direction to the next. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I love trampoline so much. <laughs> yeah. It's so it's so fun and it's so easy because you just have to like just get a jump going and then uh -huh. like you can almost go endlessly if you have like just the right go techniques. Just with the, go with the flow in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's very much like that. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, it's like meditating. Like you're you're focusing on what your body's doing, but at the same time, you, you're not thinking about mm -hmm. it. You're just kind of enjoying the, the, the moment, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, what else? So there's some weight racks that yeah. people use. Well, we have the uneven bars, we have the high bar for men, and we have parallel bars for men. We have the rings, we have some beams. We have a few beams actually mm -hmm. that are different levels. Mm -hmm. um, we have the old school uh, vault, which is like this long one compared mm -hmm. to the, the newer version. Um, we have a few pommel horses, mm -hmm. and we have like the, the smaller version the mushroom mm -hmm. um, for the beginners yeah. yeah 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 but we yeah we have a lot of equipment we have a lot of mats that are yeah. just hanging around we have parallel bars that are, are shorter to the ground and we also have like independent bars that you could just use uh -huh. we have a, a lower ring too that that people can can use uh -huh. um, if they're afraid of heights or yeah. if they want to you know work on just strength uh -huh. Yeah, and you also have some harnesses for yeah. practicing back handsprings yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah, we have a few spotting yeah. belts, uh -huh. um, some which are capable of working on full twists or uh -huh. halves or whatever uh -huh. the person wants to do. So yeah, so I just want to get some information for people. Where is uh, Matt's gym and um, Dance Refuge located? So yeah. the, the address is 1146 North Vermont. 
mm -hmm. uh, Los Angeles, California, 90029. And that's just like a block north of Santa Monica Boulevard as yeah, well. So uh, really Silver Lake right on the yeah. edge there, getting into Hollywood a yeah. little bit. Yeah, it's close to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles mm -hmm. and Los Angeles Community College. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you don't need anything to, you can drop in uh, pretty easily into, uh, do you need to call ahead to come to a class or can you basically just drop in uh, to a class? Yeah, you just uh, show up. Yeah. I say get here like five, ten minutes ahead of time just so you could, you know, get prepared or fill out whatever information sure. you need to. And, um, and for more information uh, uh, and contact information, that kind of thing, what's the, what are the websites? So they're pretty simple. <laughs> uh, for the gymnastics side, uh, matsgymnastics.com, M-A-T-S gymnastics.com. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the dance studio, it's dancerefuge.com, uh, how it's spelled normally. Mm -hmm. And that's a good place to go for class schedules and yeah, contact uh, information, and contact and cost and everything. Yeah. So uh, yeah, thanks so much for uh, for doing this today. Yeah. This has been awesome. Thank you for having me. And uh, so thank you, Matthew Mori, and uh, thank you everybody. This is Philip Harrison. Thanks for joining.